Hey, good morning. I'm Carolyn Wagner. I'm the Mighty Acorns Program Coordinator for the Conservation Foundation. And um, I'm at Summer Lakes Park in Warrenville this morning. And the Conservation Foundation has been working with Warrenville Park District, um, as well as Johnson School, which is adjacent to this site, um, for probably over 20 years. And we've been doing the Mighty Acorns Program um, with them since 2007. And um, we've been doing a lot of different restoration projects on this site, um, and it is a wetland, so I'm standing on a bridge right now um, over Fearson Creek, and the creek runs from um, the property of Fermilab, which is just west of the site here, and then runs through Warrenville, and then it actually eventually leads into um, the DuPage River. 71% of the Earth's surface is water. However, only 3% is fresh water. And even less than 1% is water that we can use. So that's why it's so important that we are concerned about water quality. Wetlands are very important for all different kinds of wildlife. So um, mammals um, like muskrats and beavers, all different kinds of birds which we're seeing, as well as different kinds of uh, reptiles, amphibians like frogs, and then all different kinds of animals use the wetland as, their, um, as part of their life cycle. So as they're growing and going through different stages of their life cycle, they will use the water to grow. So the, the quality of the water for those organisms is very important because it's part of their life cycle. When we look at water quality, we look at um, uh, the chemicals that are in there, things like phosphorus, um, the oxygen levels, um, and we also look at the physical aspects of the water, um, if there's erosion. And then we also look at the biological um, aspects of it. So what we do when we do a bioassessment is we look at what are called um, benthic macroinvertebrates. And benthic are organisms that usually live on the bottom. So a macroinvertebrate is an organism, macro means large, invertebrate means without a backbone. So generally you think of organisms like insects, but it can also be something like a crustacean, which is like a crayfish, or a mollusk, which would be snails and um, clams, different kinds of worms, segmented worms like leeches. So when we look at different organisms that are present, then we can get a good indication of what the water quality is. So one thing I found here were some of uh, these little jelly-like blobs here. It's very scientific. These are snail eggs. When we're looking at macroinvertebrates, um, what we do is we use this guy. This is a citizen monitoring um, biotic index. Um, and if you look at um, the group one, the, if you find these, this group is going to be sensitive to pollutants. Um, this group number two is semi-sensitive to pollutants. And then group three is semi-tolerant of pollutants. And then group four would be tolerant of pollutants. So that would um, be an indication of a river or a stream that is not very good quality. This is the organism we found. And so we're going to try to identify it using a dichotomous key. So in this key, we're gonna look at, does it have a shell? or does it not have a shell? So if we look at this guy, does it have a shell like a clam or a snail? So this would be no shell. So then we go to the next category. Does it have legs or does it have no legs? So if it's no legs, it would be something like a worm or a leech. So this, if you look closely, has 
legs. So then we go down to the next category. So does it have 10 plus legs, like one of these aquatic uh, roly polies? Does it have four pairs of legs, eight legs like a spider or a tick or something like that or a mite? Or does it have three pairs of legs, which would be an insect who has six legs? So if we take a close look at this organism, it has one, two, three pairs of legs, six legs. So it is an insect and it would be in this category here. Okay, then the next question is, does it have wings or does it have no wings? So if we go down here, it doesn't have um, any wings, so no wings. And then um, the next category is, does it have a tail or um, no obvious tail or does it have three tails? So if we look at the back here, it has these little structures in the back, but they're not really a tail. So if we look at our picture here, which of these does it look like? Is it a beetle larva? Is it a caddisfly larva? Which of these does it look like? So if we look at the picture, it looks like we got a dragonfly larva. And this guy is one of the larger ones I've seen and uh, I think it's going to be pretty close to turning into a dragonfly. And dragonfly larva actually will live in the water um, for two years before it turns into an adult. So it's very important then that the water quality uh, is very high because it has to live in that water for two years. So this is another way to um, identify, and it is also basically um, a dichotomous key, but this is really nice because as you find your different um, organisms, you can um, have them in a petri dish and then you get an idea of the diversity of organisms you're finding. What we've found so far, um, we have found a dragonfly larva and a mayfly larva. Uh, we've also found um, water boatmen and we have found a beetle. Not all of these are listed on this particular um, chart. Um, so right now, um, from just the couple things that we looked at, we're looking in this category of semi-sensitive to pollutants, so fairly high quality. Again, however, you know, we would want to take a much larger sample um, and do it over time to get a better indication of what um, the water quality is related to what macroinvertebrates were present.